Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. If you rent or know anyone who does rent, you'd know costs are soaring and there's barely anything on the market. That's apart from in the Airbnb world, where there are tens of thousands of properties ready for short-term lease. So how did we get to this point and how do we get out of it? Today, the ABC 7pm News finance guy, Alan Kohler, on how successive governments ruined the golden era of housing. Alan, we know we have a real problem with housing in this country at the moment, but to understand how we could fix this, it's good to look at how we got here. This is home. And that takes us all the way back to after World War II. That's right. A sturdy roof to live under, a patch of ground, trees and a fresh, clean wind. There is much to be done before every family can enjoy a home of their own. The Commonwealth Housing Commission was launched in 1943, uh, so it was actually before the World War II ended. The Menzies government uh, basically decided after after the war, and in particular after 1950 or so, that the Commonwealth had a responsibility to help fund it, and that's what mm. that's what happened. Lack of finance, no loans for home building, interest rates too high, fewer rental dwellings being built. That's the story behind the housing problem. So between 1947 and 1961, the housing stock in Australia increased by 50%. Wow. Compared with a 41% increase in the population over that period. So the population was increasing enormously through immigration, in particular from Europe. Mm. But uh, housing was increasing even more. And the direct contribution of the Commonwealth and state governments to that increase in housing was... Uh, 221,700 houses, Mm. or 24% of the total increase. The government set up a housing commission with a clean-cut directive that it provide as many homes as possible for as many people as possible in the shortest time possible. A big order. And so, you know, home ownership actually increased during this period from 53% to 70% was the largest increase in home ownership in Australia's history. Mm, so it was the golden age of housing. There was a, a lot of it. It was tracking really well. <laughs> we were doing a really good job. Well, it was, that's right. And, uh, well, and, and also there was a decision made that the Commonwealth and the government had a responsibility to ensure that people had a home. So when did it start to sort of run off track, Alan? Well, towards the end of the Menzies period of the coalition in the uh, late 60s, they started to run out of money, they cut back. So the coalition government started to strangle the Housing Commission and housing funding, and it really kind of stopped after 1980 when neoliberalism took hold. All the privatisations were taking place, governments were selling everything they can get their hands on, and basically the idea of governments building housing just basically stopped. And not only that, Alan, I think, you know, there were housing commissions, state housing commissions that were actually selling off the public housing that had been built. That's right. Exactly. So, look, I mean, a few people I know, my, my wife and my one of my best friends uh, were both brought up in uh, housing commission houses and I think they were sold uh, during that time. Gosh, OK. All right. During those years, things went off track quite substantially because of neoliberalism, as you say, because of privatisation. Things were left to the private market. Now, Kevin Rudd came in and he did, didn't he, try and fix it. Mr Howard tells uh, working families that they've never been better off. Uh, Mr Costello says that there is no housing affordability crisis. Well, the problem is they're wrong. He, he brought in something called the National Rental Affordability Scheme, which was basically designed to assist people, people on low incomes to rent a house. So it was a subsidy provided of up to 20% of the rent. It was abolished by the Coalition in 2013. They capped it at 38,000 and then said they would uh, take no new entrants and they've cut it off by 2026. And that's where mm. things stand. It's due to end completely in three years' time. 
And there's a lot of people I can see through news reports that are coming off that scheme this year. Yeah, that's right. And the rents are going up enormously. You know, the rent, the average rent ran up by 15 to 20% last year and uh, is continuing to mm. rise. At least 17 residents of this complex have been asked to leave by June when their units are removed from the National Rental Affordability Scheme, sending the cost of the previously subsidised rent soaring. And the rental the vacancy rate in the country is, in a lot of places, less than 1%. So that there needs to be some kind of way of firstly making more rental, more places available to rent and secondly to make them cheaper for those who can't afford the the, the rents that now apply. Mm, okay, so let's have a look at that because we don't have enough public housing anymore and that would take years and years and years to fix. It's no short-term fix just to build more. So let's bring in now the Airbnb because this is a major problem that we have, isn't it? Emily Wright, her two kids and dog Epony Ray were facing homelessness this year and she reckons she knows the reason why. You want to rent a house for Airbnb? It says there are over 1,000 houses available. Well, you can call it a problem. I think, you know, I think it probably is a problem. I mean, I, I, I went onto REA the other day, the REA website, looked at how many places you can do a sort of just a general search. That's real estate. That's a real estate agent, is it? Yeah, that's right. There are 53,000 places to rent. And the the number of Airbnbs and well, the number of short term rentals is a bit hard harder to pin down because th- there are a lot of short term rentals and always have been, of course. But there's nothing new about it. It's just that Airbnb has made it uh, a bit more organised uh, when they came to Australia ten years ago. But I rang a, a research researcher at uh, University of Queensland who looks at this stuff, Thomas Sigler. Uh, He says that there are 300,000 or so short-term rentals across Australia at the moment and that three quarters of those are on Airbnb. So that's about 225,000 on Airbnb. What's that, six times the number of places for lease, Mm. for long-term rent, are available for short-term rent. It's a lot. And I gather they're, they're choosing Airbnb landlords because they can make more money. I think the, that's the main reason. Mm. Uh, I just did an experiment for a two-bedroom apartment in Paddington. Uh, what would it cost to rent on a lease? And the answer seems to be about $1,500 a week for a two-bedroom place in Paddington. And I looked on Airbnb for the same sort of thing and it was 3500 a week. <laughs> and, and I looked at other places as well and it was a similar kind of difference. Mm. Renting something on Airbnb is riskier, clearly, because you might not rent it out. There is a case for short-term rental being higher than long-term rental. It's a bit riskier in the sense you might get you know, people having a party and so on. So so the question then is really what's a reasonable uh, risk premium mm. on Airbnb or short-term rental? The re- risk premium is a bit too high. Mm. It's attracting people to put their houses or their their apartments on short-term rental instead of long-term lease because, you know, you only need to rent the place for two or three days a week to make more, you know, than if you had it on a long-term lease. Mm, We can't ban uh, Airbnbs, I assume, but they're a big problem all over the world, aren't they? I even see uh, in Venice, we did a story in Venice, there's so many Airbnbs that Venetians can't even live in the city anymore. So it's actually a worldwide problem, this. What can be done, Alan? How can we make it more attractive, I guess, for landlords not to go to Airbnb? I suggested in a piece in the New Daily that maybe the Kevin Rudd rental accommodation subsidy scheme could be rejuvenated and, you know, provide some sort of subsidy to those landlords that have got their places on Airbnb to put it onto a long-term lease. They only get that money if that happened. Maybe that government subsidy could get the, could get the risk premium, as I put it, down sufficiently that people would find it worthwhile to put their properties on long-term lease instead of Airbnb. How much are they subsidised under Kevin Rudd's scheme and how much would that need to go up to actually, you know, provide that incentive to get your place off the Airbnbs and into the long-term market? 
At the moment, the rental affordability scheme subsidises by about $215 a week. Nowhere near enough, obviously. Would 500 be enough? I don't know. The, the cost would run into the billion, so I, I just don't know. Labor's promising to build 30,000 social and affordable homes over the next five years. Funded the Albanese government does have this $10 billion Housing Australia Future Fund. The Housing Australia Future Fund is about making sure that we have that investment in social and affordable housing. Is that golden enough? No, no, no. That's, uh, <laughs> that's not quite fool's gold, but it's nothing, it's nowhere near enough. They're talking about 30,000 houses over five years in that scheme. We need hundreds of thousands of houses, but they, you know, they're going to have to do more for sure. Okay. So what is the answer then? What would you do, Alan, if you were in government? They have to do something. Um, yes, I agree. <laughs> and so I think the National Rental Affordability Scheme needs to be restarted and continued and there needs to be more money put into building affordable housing. The landlords need to take their properties off Airbnb need to be enticed to do that because I don't think the government can force them. They need to be enticed to take their properties off short-term rentals and make them available for long-term rentals. And the, the only way to do that, I think, is to change the way that the risk premium for short-term rentals works and so that the money you get for a long-term lease is, uh, is higher. Alan Kohler is the finance guy on the 7pm TV news. Airbnb says it's helping people combat the rising costs of living and growing mortgage repayments by giving them the opportunity to rent out their properties short term. It also says it supports a levy on tourists that governments could use to build more affordable housing. This episode was produced by Veronica Appap, Chris Dengate and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again tomorrow. Thanks for listening.